The fight against climate change and a commitment to innovation are two of the group's strategic priorities. As part of the HVDC Western Link project, our people are at the heart of one of the final major engineering challenges as they work to complete the world's largest subsea interconnecting cable. We're here in Ardneil Bay, North Ayrshire, because after months of work, this innovative subsea cable has now come ashore. I caught up with SV Energy Network's Transmission Director, Pierce Murray, to give me his insights into this exciting project. Well, Scotland has extensive renewable reserves, and it's critical to be able to get that power to flow from Scotland to England, where the demand is. And now, over the last number of years, we've been deploying a lot of technology on the two onshore interconnectors we have between Scotland and England, but really we've done everything we can with those and the next step is to put another interconnector in and this time we need to do it subsea. Well this is an enormous project between ourselves and National Grid who we're building it in joint venture with. We're investing about £1.2 billion pounds, um, and at the height of the activity we employed up to 1,500 people on building the converter stations and installing the cable. The, the link will have a capacity of 2,200 megawatts, now that's the size of a very large power station and it can send that power between Scotland and England, or England and Scotland, to, to wherever it's needed. And the cable itself uh, is 420 kilometres long, uh, of which 380 kilometres is actually buried at sea. Well this is a DC link we're building, which means direct current. Now the direct current is different from the vast majority of the rest of the electricity network which is AC, alternating current. One of the issues though is that you need to be able to convert power between AC and DC. And on the volumes of power we're talking about here, that needs extremely large, highly technical stations called converter stations at either end of the cable. After chatting with Piers this morning, I wanted to find out more about this converter station. So I'm here with Claire from Western Link to get a tour. And now I'm off to chat more with Peter Roper. We started the converter station sites back in 2013 with the civil works back in 2013. We're working through now, we're, we've done a lot of the electrical construction and our aim is to complete this year in 2017. We have two converter stations, one up here at Hunterston in the north and then one in the south in Flincher Bridge in Deeside. The, the sites are huge. We, the site here at Hunterston is, is 22 acres. The converter station itself, you could fit 12 football pitches. We have six transformers on site, 500 tonnes per transformer. You know, huge pieces of plant on site. When we, to go from, from sea to land, we, we have landing points and they're a really big engineering challenge. In fact, we've just finished the, the Ardneil Bay landing up here near Hunterston. So what we do is, earlier in the project, we laid pipes from the land to the sea. So we installed these pipes and then we came along later and actually floated the cable into the pipes and drew the cable through with a winch to, to meet with the land cables on shore. This project is um, it's the first time that we've actually integrated a large HVDC link into the GB transmission system. You know, it's a real first. And on top of that, it's, it's also actually the largest subsea cable in the world. I've been working on the project since 2009, you know, since it was a twinkle in someone's eye. And, and now to see it actually delivered and, and close to energisation, it's a, it's a really proud moment. We are extremely proud to be involved in this exciting project. It's a clear example of our commitment to investing in the UK and will be a critical part of the UK's energy network for the next 40 years. <laughs>